जन मन अधिनायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विधाता पंजाब सिंध गुजरात मराठा द्राविड उत्कल बंगा विंध हिमाचल यमुना गंगा उच्चल जलधि तरंगा तव शुभ नामे जागे तव शुभ आशीष मागे गाहे तव जय गाथा जन गण मंगल दायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विधाता जय हे जय हे जय हे जय 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 हे I would like to call upon today's chief guest for lighting the lamp Shri Brahm Bhishma ji royal priest of royal family of kingdom of thailand Ms Alpana Dubey ji deputy chief of mission for embassy of india in thailand and Dr Alka Gupta ji managing director of Agath Healthcare Thank you so much. Namaste, Sawadika. Good morning. Thank you for coming, and pranam to my our chief guest. So today we have our chief guest, Deputy Chief of Mission from Embassy of India in Thailand, Miss Alpana Dubeji. Bhishma Ran Se Brahman Brahman Suk Brahman Kul Royal Priest. of royal family kingdom of thailand so i welcome on behalf of agath healthcare welcome i would like to uh, introduce uh, achan bhishma brahma ji he is royal priest of royal household he has completed his studies in india vivekanand vidya kala ashram gurukulam he has done his till 12th and engineering engineering and in marine engineering from amet university he has sailed as marine engineer for 13 months and became royal priest from then on his spiritual learning is done with the blessing of shri jayendra saraswati shankaracharya ji and shri Vijendra Saraswati Shankaracharya ji from his 7th grade till today when he was in CIRS he has studied spirituality vedanta scriptures from swami swarupanand and swami anukulanand ji he has been participating preaching in various programs conferences and many occasions for the well thought and well being of people for about 10 years and he is continuing to do so in many occasions he has represented hindus in thailand with the government of thailand to help society regarding regulations education and well being now i would like to call upon the stage ms alpana dubey ji please namaskar sawadika i hope i am visible i am now standing little higher <laughs> so yeah it is an honor for me to be present here on this occasion of yogotsav 2022 i would first like to thank dr alka gupta for inviting me on behalf of the embassy of india in bangkok i also would like to greet achan brahma bhishma ji uh mr ravi sahgal ji i hope he is also here president itcc and other distinguished members of indian community who have gathered here to participate in this yogotsav 2022 which is being commemorated as 100 days countdown to international day of yoga 2022 
As all of you know that we have started International Day of Yoga since 2015. On 21st of June, we celebrate it after the uh, United Nations General Assembly resolution was passed in 2014, and that was also moved by India in the UN. And it's a great kind of victory that uh, this has been recognized at International Day of Yoga. As we all know, that yoga has originated from India about maybe thousands of years ago, and it's mentioned in our Vedas. And uh, we have the Rishi Munis who have been practicing yoga, and it is. It has been part of Indian philosophy and life of Indian people for thousands of years, and now it is being practiced by people all over the world with the aim of attaining good health, happiness, well-being. So I think the theme of International Day of Yoga 2022 is also yoga for health, well-being, and peace. I know that uh, Dr. Alka Gupta is uh, running here this Agat uh, Healthcare and also giving advice to a lot of Indian people and Thai people to practice yoga and how it is uh, practiced in uh, proper form. And it is very important that different forms of yoga, which is including asana, dhyan, and uh, meditation, so these have to be practiced under uh, the expert and practitioner's advice, and then only it is beneficial for us. And during particularly this COVID pandemic for last two years, all of us have realized the importance of yoga. If we were not practicing earlier, a lot of people, I think, have started practicing during this period when we have suffered several mental, physical stress, uh, also illness. So yoga has provided some sort of solution or preventive. You can say that it's also a preventive part uh, of uh, having good health. So before you get ill, it's better to practice yoga and keep yourself fit. In Thailand also, yoga has become very popular. I think it has been popular for a long time. And it is part of like physical fitness, plus it provides mental health also. So I, am, I think there are other people who are more knowledgeable about yoga and who have been practicing yoga, who are the experts, so they will tell more about yoga. If, and I would just like to say that from Embassy of India part that we have been organizing International Day of Yoga and since last year we have started celebration of Akam that is Ajadi Ka Anbrit Mahotsav and it will continue till 2023 and Embassy will actively uh, organizing several programs including International Day of Yoga and uh, we will uh, seek support of all the Indian community, the yoga institutions, and other such organizations. And this year is again important for both India and Thailand as we are celebrating 75th anniversary of establishment of diplomatic relations that we have already launched celebrations. Only on 21st of March, we had this logo unveiling ceremony in the presence of the Deputy Prime Minister and Foreign Minister of Thailand and Ambassador. And it was like the winning uh, contestant was awarded. There were like more than, uh, maybe around 800 uh, participants in this contest. So all these are there, like you no, know, these activities are being organized as part of 75th anniversary celebration. And there will be several other uh, such events also where uh, participation of community and other organizations uh, would be required. So I would like to just wish all the best. I think this event has already been launched by Honorable Minister of Ayush in India and with the like, no, other dignitaries and yoga gurus. And so we are just carrying forward this initiative. And I wish Dr. Alka Gupta all the success and congratulate her for being like selected as the organization by Ministry of Ayush to organize this event in Thailand. Kapunka, thank you. Now I would like to call on stage Sri Brahma Bhishmuji, please. Namaste everyone present here. And very good morning to everyone. Thank you uh, Dr. Alka Gupta for having me here as a chief guest. And it is my honor for today that I have met Mrs. Alpana Dubey. 
And it is my honor to be here today in front of everyone presenting here. So I will not be taking much of your time, but yes, uh, Dr. Algaz has asked me to talk something on today's program, yogas for health and peace. So I will try to stick to this topic alone and only. I'm not going to any kind of uh, religious or something like that, but I'm trying to talk something about global, that anyone could understand what the yogas is actually. Now, yogas in actuals, if you see many people understand that yogas is good for health, so everyone understand and think that the yoga is a kind of exercise that our physicals is performing for the good health. But in actual, yoga has two parts of it. One is the physical, and another one part is mind. Now we'll come to the mind part later on. First we talk about the health. Yogas, as we see, how does this formed? How it was invented, discovered, and what purpose is this yogasan is performed? Actually, yoga, as everyone knows, it was invented by the yogis. So what does yogis do? The yogis' main purpose is to remove of all their sorrows and attain the eternal happiness. That's what I'm uh, giving the definitions for everyone could understand that. Okay, next. So, if you try to remove all these sorrows, why exercise? Why does he want to do some exercise? Because if he knows, by meditation he would have removed his sorrows, or by any kind of rituals he could, could have attained that. But why did they invented yogas or yogasan? So the main purpose of the real yogas is not only for health. Now, yogas or yogi, what do they need to do? They need to have the mental at a very calm and very peace. They need to have the mentals attained on the situation that even on cold or hot, they remain the same. It is not that they don't feel hot, heat or they don't feel burn. They do feel. But that what their mind has expressed is always the same. They don't feel tortures. They just know that what happened. To attain this mind and calmness, it is not only the mind that work. It is not the only the engine but we need the body of the car, that is our body. If our body is weak and unhealthy, attending anything would be very, very difficult and it would take a lot of time. So the yogasan was invented for this purpose. So what happened in yogas? Yogas, you can see, after you perform so many yogas, uh, yogasan and everything, it always making you calm in that exercise, in that postures, in that asana. So what will happen to, to us when we attain that? So our mind is calm. So after this exercise, after this yogasana, and you continue to do your work, or you continue to do whatever you wanted to do, for the throughout of the day, you feel like you have made some meditations, some kind of meditation. And that's why yogasan is very, very popular around the world. It is not because of if you do yogas and you are healthier or stronger than you're doing the cardios or you're doing the weightliftings. No, that is not the purpose of this yogasan. After you perform so much yogasan and you listen to the instructions, you will understand that the most important in yogasana is not the position, the structures of it, or how much you can stretch, 
or how perfectly your body is attuned with the instructor. But the main and the core of yoga is to control your breath. Your breathing is number one. So what happens when you control your breath? You attain meditation. So this is the meditation without you doing the meditation. Number two, what does yoga give you next? Because it was invented by the yogis. So what does yogis needed to do? They need to understand each and every part of their body. They have to control each and every part of their body so that they could always remain calmness. So what the yogas do? All the yogasans aim for you to have the controls of each and every part of your body. When you stretch, you must know which part of your body is used, which part of muscle is used, with the control of breath, meditations and understand of your body. So the more you do the yogasans, the more you can control your body. Some people might not have the drawing skills, but if you wanted to have, after you do yogasans for so many months and so many years, picking up this skill is not difficult. Because why? You have to understand that every skill in this world comes from how well you control your muscles. The only thing that you cannot draw is because you cannot control your hand, your fingers, as your mind wanted it to do. Because you cannot train your mind to be on the some things, on very purposeful of the drawing. So these yogasans give you two things. One is meditation. So when you have a meditation, you have a calmness. That is the control of breathing. Number two, your control of your physical muscles and body, so you can draw or do whatever you want to do. This is how the yogasans is helpful for our health. Each in muscles is used. People have office syndrome. People have so many, many other problems. The only people who get office syndrome is because of some of their muscles is overused and some of their muscles is not used. So what happened for our healthy? We have to use all of our muscles parts, all of our muscles, so that in people who are old will not have all the joints problem. It is, physically, uh, it is scientifically proved that the joints problem that people have is because of the muscles. It's not strong enough to hold your weight when you are old. Because all we do is walk, sit, talk, and our jobs or work mostly on this today is very station. Or if you have to use physical, it's only one part of the physical that you do. It's not other muscles and other parts. And that is why this yoga asana is very must. After you do today, I do not know how many people do it every day, but it is very good for you to do it every day. To me, for me, I do yoga asana every day in the form of Surya Namaskar. It is my duty to do it every day in the morning, at least 13 times. So every day, after I do, I attend some kind of meditation without doing the real meditations. And after that, if you wanted to do meditation, you wanted to work, or you ha really have very urgent work to do, I feel fresh, and I could do works, I could perform something very good. It is saying that it is our duty to take care of our health, but we should not attach that we should not die. Everyone will have to die. But it is our duty to prolong that, to, in, to stay alive as long as possible. It is everyone's duties.
Thank you.